Hi, for today's lesson, we're going to be looking at Stand By Me by Benny King. I've transposed this to the key of C, so we've got some nice open chords. We'll be using C, A minor, F and G. And we can also, in this key on guitar, incorporate the bass line between each chord. This is aimed at early beginners and we're going to keep it nice and simple. It's a very simple song and it's a very effective song. Here we go. The chords we'll be using today will be C, A minor. I'll be using this version of an F and G. If you are still learning and very new to guitar, then play the F major seven. or the F major, if you're able to do that. We've got four chords. And in between each chord, there's a short bass line. What I want to do with this is set up the fingers in best practice, keeping in mind where they are for the chord. So whatever bass line we do in between them, the fingers that we use will help us land in the chord shape with the least amount of movement possible. And that ultimately will make the flow of the song much smoother. We start on the third fret of the E string with our third finger. We then play the second fret of the A string with our middle finger and then the third fret of the A string with our third finger and then strum the C chord. We do this twice as in the song. We then have to move from a C to an A minor. When we go from the C to the A minor, the transition here is all on the A string. So we have the third finger on the third fret already. We then bring the middle finger up to the second fret and then take the middle finger off to play the open string and then strum the A minor chord downwards as a little extra bass note, we bring the third finger here up to play the third fret of the E string, then play the open A string, and then strum the A chord down again. So we have this. Our next chord transition is from A minor to F. And we get there from our last strum of A minor. We then bring the third finger up to play the third fret of the E string. Bring the first finger up to play the first fret up of the E string. And then put our fingers in the F shape position. Our next transition takes F to G. So by moving the first finger to the E string first fret, then playing open A, then playing middle finger to third fret E string, sets us up in the ready for the G position. And then we back to the beginning again. So I'll play through that slowly one time. a little bit quicker.
Okay, so the song consists of that bass line and those chords pretty much all the way through. So you can play that for the majority of the song anyway. When it gets to the verse, it's nice to bring the volume and the dynamics and the energy up a little bit. So what I've done here is bring in a strumming pattern. So we're going to be using the exact same chords, but we'll be incorporating a strumming pattern now. The rhythm we'll be using today is down, down, up, up, down, up. Down, down, up, up, down, up. Here's the chords in sequence with our new strumming pattern. Now this song consists of an intro, a verse and a chorus and then we play that three times in a row. The ending is a repetition of the chorus. So if you take the picking pattern with the bass line and the chords that we did at the beginning and use that for the intro and the verses and then you use the strumming pattern for the choruses and the ends, that will set you up just perfect. I'm now going to show you a slight enhancement of what we've already done. So once you've got to grips with that, I'm just going to show you how to bring the dynamics out a little bit as you progress. Now these are techniques that will help to build the dynamics of a song and just make it sound a little bit more interesting. They are quite subtle but have quite a big impact as well. What we've done so far with the bass line and the chord is being of the same effect. So we've just done the down strums here to create some definition between those two separate parts and to give the bass line a bit more of an effect that it has in the song. I'm going to what we call palm mute the strings with my picking hand. Now a palm mute means when we're picking, instead of letting the string just ring out, I'm actually going to rest this part of my hand on the strings. On this acoustic guitar, I'm going to put it right next to where the bridge is because it lets the note still ring out. But as you can see, it's got a little bit more of a thud sound to it. And that's what I want the bass line to sound like. So if I rest my hand on the strings next to the bridge and then down pick whilst my hand's resting on the strings, it will mute the strings enough that the note still rings out. Now if I do that further down this way, we lose the note altogether and it becomes much more percussive. However, if I slide it all the way back to the bridge, I can find a sweet spot where we can hear the note, but it's controlled. So that's how I'll be playing the bass line. So take some time to practice that. When I add the chord underneath, I'm going to release my hand from the strings and let them just do the strum that we were doing before. you've enjoyed today's beginner guitar lesson it's a classic song four chords that you can get used to your chord changes with a bit of an interesting bass line in there to make things a bit more interesting and build on your dynamics the bass line's the definitive part of the song so when you're practicing something and you're new to guitar and you recognize what you can hear it makes a massive difference to your motivation so enjoy getting to grips with that and i shall see you next time goodbye